it's kind of the the uh, the beginning of the uh, the week um, where you all are are getting the textbook still, which I completely understand. So don't stress. Uh, I, I'm I'm willing to to work with you as much as I possibly can. We have a uh, one of your students here uh, that's here at Hamlin University taking the classes, but he's uh, of course taking the classes online. And again. Um, we have Robert Bollard, and he's going to be speaking about environmental issues. And these are some of the people that, if you're getting a degree, a master's degree in environmental education, you need to know them. Um, uh, and uh, it's a graduate level, so we are expecting uh, a lot from you all um, at a graduate, you know, uh, other readings and writings and things like that. So, again, just uh, two books and a few articles uh, is uh, with no quizzes or, or tests, okay? Um, so here's the book. It's a fabulous book um, on environmental justice. He's a leading scholar. And really, you're just kind of reading here to, where is it? Here. Um, so not too much, and it's a fun read. Uh, and again, it's on eco-pedagogy, uh, which is the founded by Paulo Freire, okay? Um, the last chapter, I might actually take one chapter, uh, one article out, and uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, and um, but again, uh, it, it's a pleasure, honor to uh, have you part of this class, um, environmental footprints. And I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit more about myself. I was kind of noting to him, and he, he uh, so I wanted to mention to to you all. Um, this is called a Compassion: Religious Perspectives on Animal Advocacy. It's a book I co um, uh, edited uh, last year, and uh, it got one of the uh, a number of awards so far. And it's top fifty uh, religious books of the year um, by Spirituality and Practice, I think. So uh, please check it out. It's about a variety of different religious perspectives from Judaism, Catholicism, Hinduism. Um, Sufism, uh, Krishna, um, Quakerism, on how they view um, the protection of non-human animals, which is fundamentally um, part of environmental education, right? Uh, another book um, that I just recently uh, finished is The Accumulation of Freedom. And if anybody knows about the Occupy movement, which is global, uh, this is a, a lot about it, and it speaks to um, alternatives to the economic system, and uh, I'm about to speak in Columbia College, yeah, Columbia College, with an, a U instead of an O, uh, mm -hmm. Columbia College in Chicago, about this book, so I'm really excited about it. so I just wanted to show you uh, some of the books that, um, that I've been putting out in the last uh, month or two, and uh, finally, um, another book I'll brag about, uh, and, and tell you a little bit about, is the it's called the Global Industrial Complex, and it's a term I coined. And uh, this one just came out uh, last month, and the accumulation came out this month. And uh, it has Vandana Shiva in it. And if anybody knows about the privatization of, of water, Vandana Shiva is uh, a leading scholar in, in, in that field. So what we're going to talk about um, a little is just how environmentalism is not just uh, an environmental protection, environmental justice is not just an issue that we need to be concerned about in the United States, about trees and, and uh, the water that's going on in the U.S., but it's also a global issue. And uh, one of the articles talks about the UWA, which I had the privilege when I was younger to actually uh, protest and uh, be one of the campaign organizers in protection of the UWA, um, where they were a, uh, an indigenous tribe. Uh, that was being drilled uh, by Occidental Petroleum Industry and their whole uh, land was being destroyed and uh, they were about to commit mass suicide. So if you wanted to talk a little bit about what other um, issues besides UWA is going on in Colombia really quick and then we can talk about that and kind of close up. Well, as I have mentioned in other classes, uh, my country has had some issues with uh, human rights not to mention animal rights. So right now, uh, Dr. Nochella also shared, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, move like that. a poster. There is like a campaign that is going on in at home against bull fighting because there is a lot of uh, animal torture. We also have issues with uh, mining and oil industries. 
uh, Colton is one of them. And what is Colton? I mean, I kind of mentioned the, the cell phone the first, uh, you know, interview, but what is Colton? It's a mineral that has uh, good properties for storing charge. Okay. So it's something that cell phones and a lot of um, lots of uh, the new devices need in order to be charged. And how are they getting this Colton? Just going to the wilderness in those places where there are plenty of coltan to be exploited. Okay, exploited. so they're doing a lot of strip mining in, in yeah. Colombia as well as in Africa. In, Africa, in Africa, Africa, it's even worse. Yeah, yeah, and even worse in Africa because they put children, child labor into effect and then they destroy the gorilla it, habitat. It happens in rural Colombia too, child labor, we have that too. Yeah, and then what, what goes on with the, like, and you know, we're talking back and forth about the Colombia, I, I did a lot of work down there for about 2000 to 2003, uh, just about advocacy and, and trying to create alternatives to violence down there uh, with the people. And so what's going on with the oil? Like, how does that affect the environment? Well, that is uh, a very long answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but in short, I guess. I don't know, like, details, but uh, it creates a lot of conflict to begin with. Okay. Because, of course, uh, they drill oil. Okay, so we've got um, conflict that it causes. Um, in places where probably native people live and they don't get any benefits. Okay. Or, or they get lies, a lot of lies from the government. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of violence towards people. A lot of violence. So we've got violence. And then we have a lot of displaced people in okay. the cities that they don't, they have to uh, escape from their homeland. Yeah. And then, you know, finally, I think um, a point would be is just the ecological environment is destroyed and, and, and clear cutting is, is, is rampant. It's uh, just depressing. Yeah. I, yeah, it's depressing. They have even uh, destroyed uh, places that hadn't been studied yeah. for the first time. So, like uh, virgin jungle. And yeah. So water. Water pollution as well. Oh yeah. Everything is just a domino effect of. Yeah many things. Well, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, maybe we could, we'll have another dialogue about the readings together. Uh, but I, I thought it was really interesting to, 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 to get us out of this U, um, U.S.-centric perspective of environmentalism and to look at Columbia as one case study that uh, environmentalism is, is a, a very important issue from animal advocacy to human rights to, uh, to ecological protection. And it's how it's all connected. So thank you so much for your time. Hopefully you enjoy the class. And it's, it's uh, again, as people have said, it's a, uh, it's a good amount of work. Um, but that's, that's grad, graduate uh, work. So um, hopefully you have a wonderful time. And send me an email, phone call, anytime. Take care.